On March 30th, 2017, Kendrick Lamar dropped his video for Humble. It was a visual marvel. In a sea of one eye-catching shot after another, it was this 10 second stretch from 157 to 207 that people couldn't stop talking about. Today, you can see these seemingly sporadic but precise movements in a bunch of projects, like Doja Cat's video for Boss B Kago and Miguel's Remind Me To Forget, and J-Rock and Kendrick Lamar's WoW Freestyle. It suddenly seems like hip-hop can't get enough of this type of shot captured by this robotic camera rig. Sick. <laughs> but there was a time when this technology was mostly used for food commercials. To understand how the Cinebot went from food commercial staple to avant-garde music video tool, we've got to rewind a few decades. Music videos have been around since the 1950s, but at the stroke of midnight on August 1st, 1981, a new era in music began. MTV, the first ever 24-hour music video channel, aired for the first time. It played The Buggles' Video Killed the Radio Star as its first video. Labels began throwing money into creating visual components to help boost album sales, and the music channel was a perfect vessel for that. And 15 years after MTV's arrival, there was a new player in the video making arena capitalizing on the music video boom. This is Jason Rowe, the managing director of Camera Control, who's been there since the company's very beginning. Back in the day, all the big, you know, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, all those big music videos we worked on and they used motion control rigs, or Cinebots, to make it happen, though not exactly in the same way. One of the earliest video projects to use a motion control camera system on a big scale was a long, long time ago. More specifically, in the original 1977 Star Wars movie. In early sci-fi films, planet and spaceship models would move around the camera, but digital effects pioneer John Dykstra created a Dykstra Flex, which allowed for the camera to slowly move around the model. This better simulated movement while still keeping the shot perfectly stable. Compared to more modern motion control rigs, like the Bolt or the Cobra, the Dijkstra Flex was very large, moved very slowly, and its angle movement were limited. Despite its limits in hindsight, this new rig system completely revolutionized video capture. It was one of the first times camera movements could be programmed into an, albeit, very large computer, so they could be precisely replicated take after take. This allowed editors to add in multiple composites, making arguably the most iconic intergalactic battle scene of its time. From there, this technology entered more parts of the video industry, from commercials to smaller scale projects like music videos. Enter Camera Control, which used the technology to create some of the most iconic music videos of the 90s and early 2000s. For the early projects, Jason says the motion controlled movements were more static, used mainly for super precise pans and to create slow motion effects, like in this Britney Spears video from 2000. So we used the slower, larger rigs for motion control, but the faster rigs have really had their heyday the last sort of four or five years. They've been used more and more. Well, I think a lot of the, the previous stuff was was heavy post effects, heavy compositing. And now I think it's more about that dynamic camera move. You go from ground level to high up in you know, a second or less. But this advancement in music video technology didn't come immediately. At the dawn of Y2K, the music video industry faced its own mini apocalypse. The whole music industry was pretty much flipped upside down. Physical media sales were slowly becoming non-existent. Between 2000 and 2010, CD sales dropped $9.8 billion in revenue. That's because more consumers started getting music online, oftentimes illegally through sites like LimeWire. A lawsuit brought against LimeWire alleged that LimeWire alone cost record labels about $500 million a month in sales and that users stole about 3 billion songs per month. And there were now new sort of digital platforms for music. So the industry as a whole was very confused and just trying to figure itself out and reinvent itself. At the time, Jason says filming music videos back then was a lot more expensive. Cinematographers were shooting on film and productions needed bigger crews to see projects through. With this loss of income from low record sales, labels just weren't investing in videos too much. The slump in the, the music video industry really didn't affect us because we are involved in many other facets of the, of the industry. We do a lot of feature film work, a lot of commercial work. 
During the early 2000s, Camera Control shifted its shoots away from music to feature films and commercials using Cinebots. And food commercials were and still are huge users of Cinebot technology. We do a lot of, of what's called tabletop shooting. And one of the main reasons why this technology is used in that part of the industry is the precise control that you have over the camera, especially when you're shooting at very high frame rates. High frame rates are used to prevent blur on fast moving subjects, especially when you want to create slow motion effects, but you need a lot of stability to do it right. Imagine you, you're shooting at a thousand frames a second and you're trying to track something falling through the air and splashing into a, you know, a glass of water. Trying to do that by hand would be super, super difficult. Meanwhile, music videos were on the verge of a comeback. Labels finally found ways to comfortably capitalize on streaming in the 2010s with the help of the advertising industry and subscription services. As of 2018, streaming accounted for more than 75% of all music consumption, and ad revenue from streaming sites helped to refill industry pockets. At the same time though, YouTube, a new platform, was moving past fun cat videos and babies biting their siblings. Record companies were finding new ways to capitalize on the seemingly endless exposure that online video had to offer. And with new video publishing technology came new video capturing technology. Camera control would soon be back in the music video game. Music videos have come back in a big way for financial reasons and for technical reasons. Now you've got digital camera systems that have become super small, less expensive to purchase, less expensive to rent, and with less expensive technology and fewer financial restrictions, video directors like Humble director Dave Myers reached out to Jason to push visual boundaries. That call would revolutionize not only Jason's business, but the hip hop music video. Myers' crew attached smaller cameras to Cinebots like the Boat or Cobra and programmed them to move electronically at super precise angles around a subject. The Cinebots fast moving tracking capability is the core of what makes Humble so iconic. After the video was released, the response was huge, not only to the video and the song, but to the camera work. After everyone sort of saw that video, you know, we, we were getting calls in, a, a lot of people referencing that video for the type of movements that they wanted to do. And since that watershed moment when Humble dropped, Camera Control has worked with artists like ASAP Rocky and Post Malone, and even some outside of the hip-hop arena like K-pop group ONF. When properly executed, filming with Cinebots offers surreal, larger-than-life perspectives. Cinematographers can control speeds in the foreground and the background of any given shot. And because the camera is programmed to make and repeat precise movements, editors have multiple versions to play with after filming ends. It's this versatility that makes the motion-controlled rig so desirable, and why the technology will be around for the long run.